I'm having some technical problem in the last two weeks. Uh, I hope I can continue this week, but I am using another uh, uh, slide uh, system. You know, I'm using the Google uh, Slides. I hope I know how to use it. So um, this week I'm going to talk uh, a little bit about, you know, the uh, common root of our uh, language system. So you will see that I'm trying to present you remnants of the uh, this common code the sound and the, and the pictograph that, that we were using when writing system first began. Uh, sometimes it can be that, you know, it might seem that uh, there are thousands of years of difference and the geographic location might be very different, but uh, the pattern is very consistent. So if they didn't start with the common core sound and words, you know, this uh, cannot happen. So you will be the judge yourself. So I'm going to start and um, also, uh, at the beginning, I will present to you uh, with the slides, I will show you how amazing our human eye and brain is in understanding symbol, okay? So, I will begin now. Okay, so, here it is. Okay, uh, this is the basket starfish, you know, as I said, you know, I am against, you know, the uh, way of saying that, you know, our, uh, we are separate uh, family trees, which we are not. I believe that we are like a basket starfish, fish. we all share one common core. Every single one of us is just a branch, not a tree, okay? So the core is what we share, not a, a root as a separate tree, okay? Because that way, uh, you know, um, we, if we understand it that way, you know, we'll usher in human hierarchy and then I think, you know, it needs to be changed. My view is from the East, you know, from an Asian and also female perspective and you will see that it's a little bit different from the academic view. So uh, I hope you can uh, find your way to uh, make your own judgment. First of all, no culture is pure. Actually, the purity of culture actually brings us a lot of problem since ancient time and uh, with the following slides you will see that each simple concept is formed by endless cross-cultural exchanges. We throw things forward and backward and we understand things you know in a very subtle conceptual way. So um, it's not as uh, simple as linear as uh, most of the li uh, Western linguists is teaching you. So um, I think the importance is the context you know. Sometimes a word you know can have very different meaning, or they can have exactly the same meaning, even though the symbols are different. It really depends on the context, and our eyes and our brains, you know, actually is a very amazing tool for us to understand the world around us. First of all, you will see from this slide the very naive but powerful visual understanding of a human since very ancient time, and again, you know, it depends on the context. Okay? Okay, when I show you this for the last, you know, um, few weeks, we have been uh, talking about, you know, the um, the Tau sign. But if I just show you this uh, cross sign right there, it can be anything, right? And of course, you know, uh, if you put it into context, you know, you will see that it's a mark on the tree. And um, of course, you know, the linguist has already proved to you, you know, the very beginning, you know, the uh, ancient Hebrew, Tau, the, the, the way they, they pronounce it the Taf, the last alphabet of, in ancient Hebrew script, uh, is actually means a mark, okay? And then gradually, you know, the Phoenician, you know, uh, gave it another sound as the Tau, but actually in ancient time, the V and the U is also always used interchangeably, okay? So, in the modern time, you know, if you're given a piece of paper, you you will see a square. It is very natural for you to make a cross. You know, it's still that cross right there. It's still just a sign to you, which doesn't even uh, attach any names to it. Okay. So also, even if a circle, if you mark on it on a piece of paper, it is just a mark. You know, means nothing else, right? But 
look at this you know uh, I'm sure you have seen a lot of this mark on the floor a lot of the construction workers actually mark the place where they have to drill or they mark the place where certain things are underground you know for them to work on so for this is uh, a little bit more than just a mark but if you are a astrologist you know someone who study the stars or you're a scientist this is actually the symbol of the earth so it's the same thing but it all really depends on who you are where you are and and then it actually carries a different meaning and then a very similar sign right there this is a very modern use of sign you know if you look it up it means the tape drive because in this computer age this is the sign you know where uh, the, the the magnetic data are stored you know in in a, in a tape drive okay of course when you see it in your mind you know it is a rolling you know symbol and then uh, if you go back there which was uh, just a mark a while ago now if you look at it with the concept of, of, of wheeling around you can also understand it as a wheel of course when the wheel uh, goes on it also become you know a lot of different meaning first of all you know it can be the wheel that uh, uh, turns your fortune and also you know a lot of religion actually use a wheel form to show you know the, the direction you have to go so this wheel itself it really depends on where you are standing and how you use it it actually has different meaning and carries different sound okay so um, the same uh, symbol it seems you know but a little bit uh, outside of the circle of course you know this is the symbol of the target you will see understand it without any question right so and another similar symbol but with the with the uh, lines a little bit longer of course you know if you are an island you will understand that this is the Irish cross so uh, everything you know is, is seems similar but it really depends on where you are and how you understand it they carry on very different symbols and then of course this has become a, a national you know cross shape of the island but if I tell you that uh, you are going to understand and something religiously so this two symbol right there you know takes on this meaning very quickly uh, because you know the context and then if I tell you this is a mathematic context then the same symbol takes on different meaning and different uh, sounds as well okay so uh, goes back to the uh, beginning of that one if I tell you it is an alphabet not just a sound um, not just a, a mark and you can also understand it as two different uh, uh, writing alphabet of course since the ancient uh, Greek you know this already took on you know a different sound this become a her sound and 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 very different from this uh, taf in the Tau of the Phoenician and the ancient Hebrew and the Tau sound actually is inherited by this symbol right there so you will see that as time went by a lot of the symbol you know depend on the context also is fluxing in its meaning so we have to be very uh, um, flexible in understanding these and uh, again you know nothing is linear a lot of the things are going back and forth okay so this is a universal sign that I talked about uh, if you mark something you know it's just a cross and also if you mark the ground it's also still just a sign but uh, imagine if you change the context it is a piece of paper and that sign right there since ancient Egyptian time this is the marker of a city okay and then of course you know you still see this sign right there in the, in, in the modern map you know where you show a location right there right so it depends on the medium you know if it's on the paper it become very concrete the city sign is no longer just a mark right there okay and again you know I take you back to ancient time you know you know the story of the uh, Passover when the uh, when the Jews you know mark their hut little hut with the lamb with the lamb's blood a mark right there so the uh, angel of death will pass by that's why this is the first Passover and 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 
and to escape you know calamity so you will see this is used as a sign right there and again you know in Phoenician and Hebrew this is a Taf or Tau uh, uh, alphabet and it actually means this, a sign right there and then um, in Hebrew and Phoenician this is the last alphabet and again I show you this is a Chinese uh, number system this is the last number also it in explanation it also uh, in sound is actually very interesting it has the sound of kwai it's very similar to the French way of saying kwa cross okay it uh, is like you know saying French in ancient time it is a cross sign quite quite and then it in explanation it means do which is the meaning of do is to pass over exactly the same meaning like this and then uh, the the sound you shifting between D and T the do is to pass over the to is to escape as you can see you know this is uh, the a lot of the uh, tau sign you know crossing over a river and this the marker of a road in Chinese it actually means to to run away to escape okay and as again you know um, this sign is actually come from this sign in Chinese look at the Chinese sign right there for us when we show the road the way it is also the cardinal point is actually very similar to the ancient Egyptian uh, marker of a city okay as uh, I show you a few weeks ago you know this is also you can chase it all the way back to ancient Sumerian um, the, the marker of the street the road okay so uh, everything was actually identical the more you go back to the ancient time and again you know when you come back to the uh, writing system this is a Phoenician Tao so the Chinese sits right in between these two very ancient system right there uh, sharing the same symbol sharing the same meaning sharing the same sound okay so so of course you know from the Phoenician you know and then you go to the Greek and that's why the Jesus you know always standing on this cross road right there because he's taking the soul you know across from the from the uh, hell you know towards heaven so you will see that he's standing uh, in between the two rim at the cross road also and then as terms of sound you know you go to Sumerian the do sound actually has the um, has the picture of a foot actually uh, as exactly the same Jesus call himself the outdoors he's the way he's the road you know of course you have to walk your way walk your 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 your, your road okay so again I go back to this crossover as I show you many weeks ago I have been sitting up on a cliff you know observing this very very interesting you know act of crossing over when the uh, when winter comes you know when the water actually dries up it is actually a lot of the valley at the crossing point for animals and then uh, the Phoenician will make this crossover sign as the Tao sign and the Chinese explain this as Dou as also to cross over and then of course the when the Greek comes that's why you know they they put the foot past you know it's actually connected to the foot and then they have to put this sign visually to remind the people that it actually means uh, the pass over of course pass her actually means you know the crossing over of the Jewish you know uh, meaning and also uh, become the what you call the Easter Easter definitely is the resurrection of Jesus it's it's just you know the context is changed but then you will see that the Greek is actually using this mark to show the people that it's actually the crossing over and then um, the Chinese actually as time went by we have another very specific uh, uh, way of writing you see the river right there a cliff right there you see the any uh, hand leading this, uh, kind of unseen energy or the animal head right there and then what is crossing definitely it is the animal in reality I sat in the cliff you know I watching the animal knows their way they find their way to cross the over because they come to drink and then they cross over the river of course human being actually is led by any 
animal. It's not that the, the human being lead the animal, it's just the animal always lead the human being to know the easiest way to cross a river, okay? So, of course, you know, in really religious sense, you know, um, that's why, you know, Christ, you know, is written like this. Visually, it is very easy for the people in the right context to understand, and this is the uh, transcribed, you know, into English, or the CH in English is actually the cross, you know, in the ancient, in the Greek sense, okay? So Christ, you know, being the last leader is actually leading the people between two rims, and he's also exactly the same hand that takes this unseen energy anymore, uh, which in a sense is the soul over to the other rim. So you can see that, you know, actually the ancient speaks in metaphor. If you look carefully at all the ancient writing, a lot of the uh, evidences are right there in front of their eyes. But because we keep insisting that we are different family trees, then we don't put them together to look at them, then we can never get to the truth, you know, okay? So here in this picture I want to show you you know the word why a cross is led by this A you know again and again I told you that this A is the upside down animal head and it always shows an action uh, again the A and it's always the unseen energy that's why you know a cross is actually the energy that takes you over and that's why you know also the X you know the crossing is also you know a very important sign that's why all the ancient uh, writing system they start with the A they end with the X for them the X is also the end but that the end is also the leader leading to a new circle so everything is in a circular form again and again but then in to understand a symbol is not a, a, a straightforward thing they are very different way of understanding it First of all, if it's a river, if you mean a cross, you can actually mean an action uh, going over from one side and to the other side. One can be a, a, an immobile thing, the other thing need to be a sold and animated energy that goes across. That's why the A is so important even in English, okay? So the other way of right, looking at it, you know, there's the cross, you know, because it actually makes the cross sign right there. and, and then you will see that this is actually to roll over, you know, to another cycle right there. Or the other way of understanding it, as I said there, other than animals, you know, you will see that the river valley is a very interesting thing. A lot of people from different walks of life, as this picture taken in Yemen, you will see that people of different tribes and pe different purposes, they really come across each other, you know, passing by each other or meeting each other like that so you can also understand X as a concept like this that two people meeting each other so other than passing or uh, crossing you can also understand the same X form as the meeting so uh, you will see that how interesting our human brain is how much subtle concept is already built into our writing system uh, thousands and thousands of years ago okay and also once again you know because I spend a lot of time with these people in in this uh, river side so you will see that a lot of the women also they come to the riverside to wash their clothes this is also a location where they you know do a lot of exchange of information you will see that even come to the English word you know it was still you know having those signs appearing over and over again okay once again you know the passing over the end and the beginning is actually the same thing in the ancient's mind and uh, what I show you here is ancient Egyptian um, hieroglyph and this is the sun circuit you know of course in a way it means eternity when it's elongated they use this eternity sign to protect the Pharaoh's name of course you know they want the Pharaoh to be uh, to live a long life and for generation and generation or, or after and of course you also know this on side they know that it's eternal life but I will propose to you that you know how to understand this sign for me this is already a complex sign right there and because the Greek actually shows you how it is formed you know this is the Omega sign as I said this is little gap right there when the final hour comes you know this is little gap that people need to cross over and then 
this is where the, the end comes in. This is tel, uh, tele in or telos in Greek. It actually means the end, the final point. Okay. So this when these two joins together, when it blocks this thing, it means that, that you have an endless end, endless tail. So it actually means that you have you will etern, et, enjoy eternity. So this tau sign actually cross over. So you should look at these three signs all together to actually go back to understand the ancient Egyptian sign Ang and, and this is its eternity and then how do we cross a gap you know of course in a religious sense you need Jesus you know Jesus other than his name is lit by is led by this cross right there and then he's actually standing on the cross row to bridge over this little final hour right there but in the pagan uh, sense it's always the story went on you have to cross a river you will see that the same person this is uh, what you call in English now is called Kar Karon but actually in Greek you should pronounce it as Haron and you will see that both this religious name and the pagan name also start with this X you know because he's actually the leader who lead the souls you know from one bank of the uh, of the life uh, uh, of the, the dead you know to the bank of I'm sorry to the bank of the, the living to the bank of the dead okay so you will see that both are led by this X sign okay so the pagan actually leads the way you will see that you know the either the sound or the form always is consistent you will see the river it has to cross it's like the stick uh, now of course you pronounce it sticks river and but you if you look at it carefully is actually carry a very interesting toe sound right there again either the sound is right there or the form is right there that you have to cross over to that river again the Chinese sign right this and then you have to cross over like the hand leading the unseen animal as I said you know this form in Chinese always mean the the unseen energy and of course you know in Latin Alma is the soul in uh, Sanskrit Atman is also the soul that's why all this A is leading that soul word right there and in ancient Egyptian hieroglyph they also used the bull head to mean the soul so the ancient actually understand things in a very visual way and even the Chinese word Dou. Uh, in here it actually means uh, the way or the road or the leader you will see that very clearly the road is there you know the hand and leading the animal right there is exactly the Jesus or those uh, uh, as the leader and then Jesus also leading the way so you will see that the East West is actually using the same concept meaning the same thing using the same sound okay so in this uh, following slide you will see that you know from very early time you know we already started you know the road travel and the land travel and of course the Sumerian used the foot you know to mean uh, do to mean to go and movement and the Chinese used the row you know to to lead uh, the way of course the herding of animal and then of course you know sometimes we have to herd the animal across the river both of these you know crawl, uh, host the sang dou or dou and then uh, it's it's uh, land travel and river travel okay but if I concentrate on the Sumerian you will see the watermark right there both in uh, Sumerian and the Chinese the watermark this is actually very similar to the bow shape right there so it means the gorge and the crossing again you know I show you that you know they always cross over in the gorge and the cr as, a, as a crossing and then uh, and it also when you change the sound a little bit it means to flow to guide to grow to go and to drift again very clearly this is water travel but the derik in ancient Sumerian actually uh, carry on the sound derik and terek in in the, the first one is the Hebrew sound the second one is the Arabic sound both is uh, used religiously you know as the traveling of the road in a religious sense so you know when the uh, ancient Sumerian use it to travel in the river 
the uh, in uh, ancient Egyptian, uh, ancient Hebrew, and in also Arabic, they use it in Islam and Jewish culture to mean the way, the road to travel. Okay, so look at this very interesting thing. Just by adding in the read um, form, the cuneiform meaning a read, and it actually means the read raft. So they you can see that they already has some sort of things to flow on the river. So. And the Chinese word also, we use the same writing to mean a boat, okay? Uh, also carry the sound of do right there. And in ancient poetry, you know, we use the sound do, do, do. All means the, uh, a boat that carry people in a short distance crossing a river. Look at this. This is Chinese do or do or do, okay? This the style is Marathi. This is a, a, in a language in South India. And Dawa is also a boat in Arabic and which comes to the very universal Dao, uh, a boat, you know, uh, uh, that takes the people uh, across, you know, in the Indian Ocean and also in the Red Sea region. And then the Dori in the, used in the European sense and the Dori they said is a mosquito uh, language from the eastern Nicaragua in uh, South America look at all this this is India this is Arab this is European this is South America and this is Chinese all this do do da da do dori dori and diri and all of this all mean a kind of some kind of raft some kind of boat that takes people across some river so in this picture of the world map i'll show you the coincidence with all this um, words that shows our historical oceanic travel okay so this is ancient egyptian hieroglyph this is chinese all means basket key also means basket in a uh, proto Greek. Look at all this uh, in the pictorial form. In Indonesia, you see a very interesting basket right there, and they call the basket Karajang. It's also with a K. Maui is a K. Hawaiian K, and this is a K. All these are basket words, okay? And now I'll show you this uh, the bow word, okay? Diri in ancient Sumerian, Do in ancient Egyptian, uh, in ancient Chinese. Dao in India, Dawa in Arab, in the Arab countries, and Dao also in the whole Indian Ocean and the Red Sea area, Dori between the Atlantic Ocean in Portugal and also in the eastern part of America when they try to catch the bacalao, and also Dori right there in Nicaragua. Look at all this, and also Tao Tao in the Mari language means something that they bind and float, and then the back to Chinese. Do also the meaning the, the the fairy okay so the last slide I want to finish right there again I want to uh, ground you with all this and then you see this word right there you see this word right there this is Chinese uh, this is Sumerian this is Chinese okay so um we have got the B sound. All these words, uh, the foot carry the B sound right there. And then e even the Mayan word carry the B sound. Sorry, uh, I want to stop right here, okay? Um, uh, so far, I want to prove to you that we all share one single core. Go back and watch it in YouTube. Okay?